Today's episode of Car Etc. is brought to you by Chris Fox and his 2009 BMW X5. Chris's X5 is using the factory iDrive head unit made by BMW and he's also added on an Alpine PXA H800 audio processor. To convert the high level input from the factory BMW system he's used an Audio Controls Active LOC. He's replaced all of his speakers with component sets from German Maestro, the Epic series in the front and the Concept series in the back. And he's also replaced the two factory subwoofers located under each seat with the Rockford Fosgate T3-BMW-SUB. Power in the amplifier, he's got a four channel JL audio amp with the XD400-4. And for the subwoofers, he's got a monoblock JL audio XD800-1. Really awesome system there, Chris. Thoroughly impressed with your choice of car audio gear. And I'm glad that my recommendation for those subwoofers has worked out for you. Also, thanks for the nice picture of the view from your house. Super jealous of your pool. Anyway, once again, thanks for your support on Patreon, Chris, and let's get on with the video. Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Cardio, etc. Um, making another video doing something on duty today, another Project Legacy video. Nothing audio related, but it's something I've had on my shelf for a wee while now that I've kind of wanted to do, but it hasn't been like an urgent thing. It's more of just a... Uh, I can do it, I'm gonna do it just cause I can, like why not? Um, what I've got in this bag here is an old set of air horns. So uh, I got these from Jess's granddad's garage. They had a big clean out of heaps of stuff and this was sitting in there, they weren't working, I took them and I uh, took the little electric motor apart which drives these, managed to clean it out, get it moving and they actually go now and make a massive loud sound. The little horn in the Legacy isn't that bad, it's, but I figure I've got these, like why not just do something for the hell of it. Where I plan on installing them, there's not much room in the actual engine bay itself apart from maybe, you know, there's not even room there. I think I'm probably going to try and put it behind this main Subaru grill thing here somewhere in front of the radiator, I think. Well, yeah, it'll just depend if I can actually find something structural or strong to mount it to whether or not I can even put it in there, but we won't know until we try. So I'll give you guys like a, a before and an after horn test. It's going to be really hard to tell if it's made it any louder or not because cameras tend to just automatically adjust the microphone depending on how loud a environment is so it's not going to show much decibel reading difference but I'm sure it will make it much louder. Uh, let me, I'll set the GoPro up just here. The horn, the factory horn is right there. It's just one of them. There's the factory horn. already pretty loud like you know it does a good job but as I keep saying I've got ear horns why not check them in they're not singing ones or anything they're just extra loud yeah might as well take this apart and see if I can find a place to put it Okay, so I got this piece loose and I've got it just sort of sitting in there at the moment, just sort of sussing out how I'm going to mount it. I can get it in the center here, like in the middle there's this vertical vertical brace which uh, the uh, latch mounts on and then this fits like just perfectly in the gap, just, there's enough room for it to move a tiny bit in between that brace and this grill. Either I could have it like that all as one unit or I'm going to try and see what I can do if I disconnect the horns from the actual motor and mount them separately. I think in this orientation is kind of how you have to have it though because you want it to be so that A the electrical terminals and the horns are both facing downwards for water to run down rather than into. But I'm going to take this back off and see what I can do with it separately. I'm thinking I could make like a strong piece of metal which would be 
which would come up, be attached to this lip, come up, mount through the nut bolt thing here on the horn, and then go back and meet this vertical brace. Or I could try and separate them. Let's see what happens if I can separate them. That thing kind of in the middle there, mounted possibly to both this piece and that brace. And then the horns, I can take them off this joint bracket and mount them individually to here. That might be the better way to do it. I need to sit this like here somehow and try and put the thing back on, see how much room I got. Oh, I think there's heaps of room. Shit loads. Or do I just put them all up next to each other like that? Maybe that's best. I think. These would individually mount to that rail. Then this would mount to the rail as well. Yeah, it just almost isn't enough tube for it to come up like that. Because you kind of don't want this pinched. You want that to be straight if possible. Oh wait, there's that other piece though. Go about this. This thing goes like this. But I can cut some of this plastic out from under here. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to just start trying to place things and making it work as I go. The, my main issue is just the tubing, I think. If I put the horns way over here, mount them as close together as possible and then I can just make the tubes fit and I may have to cut them. Okay hey guys, got a fair bit done now. I kind of just went ahead with installing it rather than telling you what I'm doing. I just time lapse it and I'll show you now. So I've got the two horns mounted individually on this rail here, bolted on. As you can see, for this, for the electric motor, I managed to do it in a way where I didn't have to cut any of the tube. I just positioned it in the right place where the tube sat nicely with not tensioned but not pushed up so it didn't pinch or anything like that and then I made with this strong uh, I think it's brass back strap I made like a support that goes across there where it is bolted behind and another L bracket here which is under this tube and screwed to this metal which comes up and is bolted to that so that one isn't going anywhere the terminals for it are on the bottom I took a picture of it so I know which side is positive and negative I'm pretty sure positive is on the tube side and negative is over this side. So that's all mounted now and I've test fitted the um, pieces of plastic and they both go back on, no worries. The other thing I did was I cut and modified this piece to sit over top of it. So you can see I cut that section out of it there. And that just sits down. And from above, you can just see the top of the horns. So it's pretty much all mounted and good to go now. I just have to um, do some electrical running I'll put a relay in to open the power supply for them and then I'm just going to have it hooked up in parallel with this horn so when I do the horn they'll both go and I'll use the trigger wire for this horn as the trigger for the relay oh look at that this horn actually only has one wire the trigger wire and then it's grounded at that bolt that's, just, that's interesting so yeah that's where I'm up to 20 minutes later 
Okay guys, made some serious progress while the uh, GoPro was charging. I've done almost all of the wiring side of it. I figured I might as well, I didn't need to really show you guys any of it until it was all done. So, over here we've got a relay and this has a bunch of wires coming out of it. Basically it's got uh, an earth, which is this one here. It's got earth. It's got a wire which is going to go up to permanent, that's the one thing I haven't done, it's going to go to a permanent power supply up there somewhere with a fuse. And then it's got a triggered output which goes to this, comes out, ducks out of here and goes down to the underside. And then it's got a wire which goes in this conduit all the way across and then attaches onto the factory horn wire here. And basically when this activates it's going to send a signal to the relay telling it to allow power from the battery or wherever I hook it up to through the relay and to the uh, motor which drives the horns that's how the relay works that's all good i think i do need to just upgrade this ground uh here for the motor a wee bit i'm not 100 percent happy with it so i'm just going to do that real quick and then i'll put this front back on because it's getting a bit late it's like nearly five o'clock now i've gotten most of the stuff behind the grill here done so as soon as i fix that ground i can put the front back together and then tackle the power supply another day because it's late you know okay Fix that ground, just basically took some of the paint off so that this bracket is grounded to the chassis better since that's where it's getting its earth from. This piece first. Now I need to put this middle piece back in. Okay guys, I've gone ahead and uh, wired up the air horn to the power supply. I didn't film it as I was going because it was taking me a while to try and figure out how I wanted to do it and get the wires in the places that I wanted, but I'll show you what I've done now. So I managed to get that wire that you saw that was down here to go through, it's really hard to see because of the light, but I got this uh, little relay bank up and out of the fuse box and then I got, see that yellow wire? Down there, I got it to go through the kind of grommet that goes into the fuse box. And then there's a bit of excess looped up down there so that I could, you know, work on it up here. And then the wire just pops out of one of these holes where a relay would go, but there isn't any terminals for a relay there. So the wire just pops up out of there and goes down to, I've soldered it onto a 25 amp fuse, which I've put in. And the spot where that is in, there wasn't any fuse to begin with, so it was just supply on one side no terminal on the other side normally that fuse there would be if i for where the factory amp fuse would be so if i had an amp in this car like a um a macintosh one there would be a 25 amp fuse there normally but there isn't so there's no terminal for it so there was supply on this side but nothing on the other side hopefully that makes sense um so i've yeah soldered the wire onto a 25 amp fuse and shoved it in there the reason it's sitting up higher than the others is because it's actually a different style. This is uh, like what you call your micro, your mini ba blade fuses. And then all these other ones are these weird micro blade fuses where the fin fingers of the fuse don't even really come out of the fuse. They're kind of off to the sides. They're the same width and everything, so they still fit, but they're just a different style. So yeah, that's just coming out of there. I thought I'd just show you this before I put it all back together. Probably a wee bit more slack there. There we go. Now this can go back in, which is a bit tricky. I need two hands. And I've tested it, it's working. So we know we've got power, so this has to come into here. It's a wee bit tight, but there we go. These have to slide onto. Oh, 
There we go. Now that's back in. Push this back down. Clip, 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 clip. Yep, we're all good. Push the slack back through like that. So the good news is I was able to get the wire in and fused without having to drill or cut any holes in the side of my fuse box. That's what I was trying to do mainly is just get the wire in here and get it on a fuse through an OEM location which I was really thinking was going to be super hard because it's all really well taped up and everything. But I managed to do it because I got mad skills. Now this just pops back on here. Da da, done. Sweet. So you saw before. Here's after. Here's the factory horn. Here's after. So in here that's pretty damn loud, it's bouncing off the wall, hurting my ears. Um, I actually found out that this car has two OEM horns. It has one here and then another one down and behind here, which gives it a kind of a harmonic sound. So it's like a, a low pitched one and a high pitched one. And so I got those going and now I got, you can see through the front here. Now I've got those two air horns firing down and most of the sound should be coming out of this bottom hole, I guess, because there's a uh, panel just there. So it should sort of come down and scoop out. So uh, yeah, that's it, the horns are done. I'll take it outside and we'll do an outside test, see how loud it is there. So I'm not really sure whether or not the uh, difference in volume shows up on the camera or not. As I said before, the microphone tends to just attenuate or adjust for whatever volume it experiences. But um, I'm outside now, so I might as well do an outside test. I'll put the camera way down over here and honk the horn and we'll see how loud it sounds from this far away. So this is probably about 10 meters away. Not sure what that sounded like, but I have to say, outside it's actually not as loud as I was expe expecting it to be. Maybe it's because I'm behind it and not in front of it. In front of it maybe way louder. But whatever, it adds another element to it. I had them, why not install them? They work Grant. Don't know if it's any louder or not or if it's just added another tone. It must be a wee bit louder. Two horns plus two air horns. Oh well there we go guys. As I said I only installed them because I had them, not because I thought I necessarily needed them. Um, I don't know if I said this earlier but if I do end up getting my BRZ slash 86 car that I've been wanting for ages, they will definitely be coming out of this car and going into that because I've heard the horns in those and they sound like scooters. They need better horns. So they're in here for now. I keep saying I might as well install them, I've got them. So that's the main reason I did it. Yeah, it worked, it was a cool bit of fun. You can see them behind there. Just. So yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Choose to be happy and I'll catch you in the next one. Kakitana.